this brings us to the next part, uh, which is dealt uh, with uh, the Lavoisier-Laplace law and uh, Hesse's law. So these two laws will be very crucial in dealing with thermochemistry. Why? Uh, let's start with the Lavoisier-Laplace law and uh, understand what this law says. Uh, I'm just reading out uh, the, the, the law, the definition of the law itself. So the heat required to decompose a compound to its elements is liberated when the compound is formed from its elements. Now, what does that mean? It means that if you are forming, let's suppose that this is the reaction that is happening. Now, it is uh, the, the law is stating that the heat required to decompose its compounds. Now, if we want to calculate the, the, the heat required to decompose this compound AB into its constituent elements, it will be exactly equal to the heat which was liberated when the compound is formed. That means the amount of heat required to break this is exactly equal to the heat that was released when this was forming. Okay, so the, it seems very simple, but the implications are very vital. Why? Because what this means is if you are having this equation and the delta H came out to be something like delta H1, according to Lavoisier Laplace law, what means is if the, the enthalpy change of this reaction, A plus B gives AB, is delta H1 and the enthalpy of reaction of just the opposite, so this was AB formation, this is AB dissociation into, the, into its constituents. Then these two will have a relationship which is this. This is very intuitive but this is extremely important because knowing this will have important applications when we are trying to actually find out uh, the, 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 the enthalpy changes in various different kinds of uh, equations. Now imagine that you are one of those people who are trying to, say you are 200 years back, you are trying to find out uh, whether, say, this equation, if you have charcoal, you're burning charcoal in oxygen and you are getting CO2. The delta H of the reaction was kilojoule per mole. Now, you found out that burning Charcoal in oxygen gives CO2 and the delta, H, delta H of the reaction is this. And you wanted to find out what, it, so this, is, this was an exothermic reaction, right? This was an exothermic because it is releasing heat, the delta H is negative. You wanted to find out what is the amount of heat that will be required to break CO2 into this. charcoal, you wanted to find out this. This is an easier reaction to measure, right? If this is much easier than this, how will you capture C or CO2 and then you'll break and then convert it into this? So this was an easier reaction to study and find out the enthalpy change, but this was not. But now if you know that these two are interchangeable and if, if you know one of them, you can find out the other, this becomes extremely easy to do, right? So this was the experimental work that these two people did, Lavoisier and Laplace, 200 years ago, and they could exactly find out this. The, 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 uh, the act, they found out um, the value was like six, uh, six kilojoule per mole units off, so it was something like 392, 
kilojoule per mole. So that was what they calculated, but this was extremely similar to this. And they could actually find out the relationship that these two are related by just changing the sign. It's an extraordinary concept. This is also important because this is not always true in our day-to-day -day world. For example, you, you bought gold from, from a shop, right? So you bought gold, certain amount of gold in say $100, okay? So you bought $100 worth of gold. But when you take the exact amount of that gold and sell it to the shopkeeper, you won't get $100 back. So this is not, this is not always true. Like, the, the plus and the minus, so the, the reverse processes do not always give just the opposite value. So if you just go and sell that amount of gold, you won't get $200, this might be less. So I think when people were trying to find out what was actually uh, going on, finding out that these two are exactly same is an extremely important concept. So Lavoisier Laplace law, although being very simple, is extremely important, okay? now. Let's move uh, to Hesse's law. Hesse's law is also very simple, yet extremely effective. So this says, and I'm like just reading it out, the overall enthalpy change for any chemical reaction at constant pressure or at constant volume is the same, whether the reaction takes place in one step or several steps. This means, that if, say, you have a reaction that is going from A to Z, and you want to find out the delta H of the, the delta H of this reaction, right? Now, what if this reaction is not possible to monitor, not possible to do experimentally? What will you do? Now, you have uh, an easy way of doing this. So let's suppose A, you, you can experimentally determine a series of reactions that can take from A to Z, but in multiple steps. So you first found out the delta H of this reaction, and then you found out the delta H of this reaction, and then you found out the delta H of this reaction. What Hesse's law states is when the initial and the final are same, like if you're going from A to Z, the delta H will be equal to, will be exactly same if you go in multiple steps. So that's the thing. Uh, the delta is the same whether the reaction takes place in one step or several steps. Right? This, this is Hesse's law, extremely important because not always that this is this, it's not always easy to find out one, to go from one compound to another, but it's sometimes more easier to go in a several steps. Calculating this might be easier. Um, if this is not possible, you just add these and you'll get the delta H of, of, of the reaction. Extremely important. And why is this possible? Because enthalpy is a state function, right? Remember, state function where the path of going from one to the other is not defining or it's the, the, the enthalpy change is not dependent on the path. It is only dependent on the initial and the final state of the system. And that is why Hesse's law holds. Now, uh, this is also not super intuitive, right? Because in, in, in your natural world, it, it, it doesn't always happen that way. Say you wanted to go from point A to point B and the price of going from point A to point B was $100. Now, what in, in, our, in, in, in real world, what if you go from A to B and from it, it, it takes a certain amount of money, from B to C it takes a certain amount of money, and C to Z takes another amount of money? This is not always true, right? Going from A to B is a summation of all these steps. It's not true in natural world. So for the, sci for the scientists to actually find out that this is true for the chemical systems is an extraordinarily difficult thing to do, okay? So counterintuitive for the natural world, but extremely simple when we think in terms of
chemistry, like the state function and things like that. Okay, now what magic can you do when you include these two laws? So like you have, you use both these laws. Now you get, so you have Lavoisier Laplace law and uh, Hess's law. If you use both these laws, what this means is that you can have chemical equations and you can treat them algebraically. This is the combined effect of these two, these two laws. Like all, if you have any chemical, any set of chemical equations, those set of chemical equations can be treated as algebraic, right? You can perform calculations on these chemical equations using algebra, like uh, algebraic, uh, uh, like you do in algebra, right? So, uh, this is uh, extremely important because sometimes you won't be able to find out uh, like the delta H, the enthalpy change, which is the motive of thermochemistry of a certain type of reaction. But using these two laws, when you can combine or add or subtract different kinds of equations algebraically, your, the whole system becomes just mathematical. It will not depend on uh, the actual experiment. So you are doing experiments is hard. So you're going from an experimental regime to mathematical regime. This is an extremely important step. And that is why uh, Laplace and Hess's, these two laws when combined will give you things mathematically, which makes thermochemistry a lot easier.